Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ask DLC, The Joy of Volunteering. And we have two speakers today. And the first one is Dr. Jim Deitch. He is our TLC professional education officer, and he's been with TLC for about six years. Dr. Jim? Well, thank you, Ms. Bonnie. I appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to say welcome to TLC's fall program on the joy of volunteering. Uh, I'm Dr. Jim Deitch, and my co-presenter is Elaine Stippich. And Elaine, will you kind of wave so that the people know who you are? The order of things will be, I'll say a few words, maybe 10 minutes worth. Elaine will come in and do her presentation about the same amount of time. And then we're going to turn it over essentially to the audience. Those of you who have uh, been with me on other presentations, uh, you will know that I always say the smart people are not the ones up here doing all the manipulation. It's the people in the audience who are here to learn more. And I still believe that. So this should be a good and fun presentation today. Uh, we volunteers at TLC Services know that volunteering has dramatically enhanced our overall satisfaction in retirement. TLC has given each of us meaning in our lives. I like to play golf. I have been playing for two years which means that I'm getting better at hitting the ball and I'm getting better in making the ball go in the direction that I think it should. Uh, not always successful, but I have a good time playing golf. But the biggie is that golf does not give my life real meaning. It's a fun thing to do, but you've got to have more, I guess, unless you're a professional, but you've got to have more meaning in your life than just a fun activity. Now, I'm going to get a little personal here, but in, nine, in uh, 2016, when my wife of 53 years passed away uh, after a year's illness, and I was the caretaker, uh, I felt like there was a, a hole in my life, a hole in my heart. Uh, and I realized that if I was to continue and, and be, again, someone that enjoys life, I would need to do something important. When I was a kid, I would listen to my mother and some of her friends talking, and I always said to myself, I would like to participate in something important, and an important conversation. And years later, I think I must have been in my 40s, I realized that as a clinical social worker, I had been doing and listening to important conversations. Now, Wayne Dyer, in my day, had some good things to say, and I remembered what he said. He said, quote, your wound is probably not your fault, but your healing is your responsibility. Now, that was pretty important to me, just to re-realize that. Um, in my life, I, I spent the first 23 years of my adult life in the United States Air Force. In 1959, I was commissioned as a second lieutenant and was heading to flight school my professors my, uh, at San Diego State had been working on me and thought I should be a social worker instead of a, a flyboy. Um, I listened to my mentors, but I also compromised. Now, compromise is not bad, especially when it's a win-win situation. Uh, so I became a social worker in the United States Air Force. And I spent 23 years doing things. I started out as a second lieutenant, ended up as a lieutenant colonel, consultant to the Air Force Surgeon General. I later on became a college professor. And then even past that, I tried getting into politics. And the uh, I was living in Hawaii at the time. And the, the politics were that I was able to write the Hawaii uh, licensure for social workers bill. So 
I've always done things that I enjoy and I think they're, that uh, are important. But I'm going to tell you that I had a friend by the name of Joan Lowett. And Joan is one of our TLC people here. Joan suggested that uh, I get in touch with a woman by the name of Pat Hayes, who was developing an organization. And the organization was to be called TLC. And after talking with Pat, I fell in love with what she was doing. And I would tell you that as a volunteer for six years now, including being on the board of directors, um, I've realized that TLC actually saved my life and it made better time is for me. So I'm in love with the organization. So if I sound biased, I am. I think now would be important if I put on my professor's hat and tell you uh, what you already know, that there are a lot of organizations in the villages that are good organizations and organizations that um, could well take your time and uh, and that you would enjoy being a member. The idea is to connect who you are, what you want to be, and what meaning you want in your life with what organization. And I figured out there are really only three guiding principles for choosing your perfect volunteer group to put meaning into your life. And that's what I want to give to you today. This is kind of my welcome and Thank you for being here, Gift. So, Bonnie, if we could put this on the screen, um, I'll talk a little bit about the, the three guiding principles for choosing your perfect volunteer group to put meaning into your life. So, there are three ideas that I want to give and, and share with you. Um, again, let me tell you that it's the fit that's important who you are, what you want to be, and what you want to do. But it's more than just that. Here's how I think we should fit it. One, now the organization you choose, the organization you choose must focus on the welfare of people. The more directly your talents touch the lives of real people, the more your life will benefit. Reaching out and helping people in need will give you the joy you seek. So the first thing is it has to do with people. The second criteria is your talents must focus on making your community a better place to live. Having community interest will work wonders for your mental health. Also, know that the villages is now a part of your community. What you do to add to the community environment also adds to your joy in life. So the third thing is what and where you choose must be bigger than yourself. And by this, I mean that an individual as an individual, you can only do so much. And you need an organization behind you if you want to do more. Now, I'll give you a simple example. Let's say that you bake pies. And that's what you do. You give away these most fantastic pies to the community. But in your oven, you can maybe bake one or two or, or three a week. And that's nice but wouldn't you like to do more? Wouldn't it be neat to have an organization come to you and say, we love your pies. We have a bakery that wants to give you its premises for one day a week. Would you like to bake 50 pies for your community, for the needy? That's what I'm talking about. We want to be able to bake more pies than we ever thought possible. So we want whatever we choose to do to be bigger than ourselves. So let me give, give this to you again. The three guiding principles for selecting your perfect volunteer group 
to put meaning in your life, principle one, the organization must focus on the welfare of people. Your talents must focus on making your community a better place to live. And third, what and where you choose must be bigger than yourself. So, if you find an organization, and for me, TLC was this organization, that can give you all of these three things, you'll be on your way to having a happier, more productive, more meaningful life. And now I want to turn my time over to Elaine. It's all yours. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, my name's Elaine Stipetich, and um, I've been with TLC about five years now, or a little more. Um, I, when I thought about my um, my volunteering, uh, my first back before I came to the villages, I always had the thing that I am not going to volunteer and give away my time. Um, you know, I worked as a private therapist at a clinic, and then I retired after 31 years working for the Department of Corrections. And so I thought, you know, um, I'm, I'm not giving away my time. But then um, when thinking about this presentation, I realized that I volunteered even when I was still working. Um, and I'm thinking back to when I worked in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, as part of my corrections job, I was a field supervisor and I supervised agents who supervised sex offenders. And there was an organization called the Parental Stress Center and they did groups with sex offenders. They had a two year program. So they had a very unique group called the Triangle Group. And the Triangle Group had a sex offender, an affected family member, and a former uh, survivor or victim of sex abuse. And these people, there were three sex offenders, three affected family members, and uh, three victims. Uh, they were not part of each other's case. They, they were not connected as far as, you know, the offender who abused the victim. They were from different cases. And so I volunteered to be a co-facilitator in this group. And as part of my job, I didn't have to do that, but I decided that I wanted to, to learn. I've always been interested in learning more. And so I felt like I could do better on my job if I learned more about um the dynamics of the sex offenders. And then I started doing batters treatment groups, and then I did regular cognitive behavioral groups. But in thinking back, I volunteered, and I wasn't paid for that, and it wasn't part of my job. But um, I had started way back there. Then when I came to the villages, I was similar to uh, Jim in that golfing, and socializing at City Fire, um, all of those things, um, it just wasn't enough. Um, in our villas, we have socials, but when you're talking to people, if they're not, in, have the same similar interest as you, then it's not as satisfying. So I looked around to try to see if there was something I could do. And since I work for corrections, I decided to check the sheriff's department. Well, when I checked in with them, I found out they had seniors versus crime. So I think this kind of fits the stipulations that, um, that Jim mentioned about the organization, about having it be uh, a worthwhile experience to volunteer your time. So about 10 years ago, I started volunteering to work at Seniors Versus Crime. And so we help people who are uh, ripped off by landscapers or oh, just almost any problem they come in with, we try to help them. 
Um, and then uh, Pat and I um, decided to form the Mental Health Club and out of the Mental Health Club came the TLC. And so I've been volunteering to do uh, the Way to Go group. I did one group, a depression group before that, but I got very interested in um, in weight loss. I believe that it's really important for a person's self-esteem, for their health, their well-being. So, um, so I volunteered. I've been volunteering to do that group. Um, I have seen some people on a one-to-one, -one, uh, but I think that volunteering has given me almost more than I've given the people that I've tried to help. Um, I believe that when you get older, you're more apt to be isolated and to, uh, for instance, at the sheriff's department, um, we have chances to socialize with each other between customers coming in. Um, the same with TLC. Um, we kind of help each other uh, in a crisis that, you know, all of us have the older we get. And so I think also uh, isolation is so bad for people who are getting older. And so the more you can volunteer and try to help others, the more that I think you will be helped. Um, and then um, I think keeping your brain active helps you stay healthy longer um, because of the mind-body uh, uh, connection, um, you know, keeping your brain healthy and active keeps you longer you know, doing well. So um, that's kind of my experience at volunteering. I, I, you know, and then one more thing I would mention is that volunteering is really work experience. So, um, you know, if you are somebody who's young enough that, you know, you want to get a job and you don't have one yet, volunteering is just as much a job as any other job. You have to have the same, um, you know, commitment, show up on time, call in when you're not going to be there, and uh, actually the work experience. So the volunteering is also part of, of the same as a real job. The only thing is you're not getting a paycheck, but you're getting paid in so many other great ways. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to Jim. Elaine, words of wisdom. I'll say it again and again. You really, you really hit it. And thank you so much.